votes. On the no-confidence motion, moved by the opposition blog has begun in Lok Sabha today. The debate was initiated by Congress MP from Assam, Gaurav Gogoi, who attacked the centre in his opening speech. He questioned Prime Minister's silence over Manipur and asked why the PM hasn't visited the state yet. Earlier, Rahul Gandhi was supposed to start this debate proceedings, but just five minutes before, Gaurav Gogoi informed that he will do the same. Later, a Congress source has informed CNN News 18 that Rahul Gandhi wants to speak only when the Prime Minister is in the House. And that's why Gaurav Gogoi instead initiated the proceedings. Now, BJP's Nishikant Dubey was the first speaker from the government side. He accused Congress of corruption, collaborating with China, and toppling several governments when they were in power at the centre. The war of words will continue in Parliament for the next two days. Union Home Minister Amit Shah is scheduled to speak tomorrow and Prime Minister Modi will conclude the debate on August 10. Now let me remind you about what happened in 2018, the first term of the Modi government, when TDP tabled a no-confidence motion just a year ahead of general elections. 52 MPs addressed Lok Sabha then and Rahul Gandhi spoke for 15 minutes. Some of our viewers would remember that's the same time when he hugged and winked and was criticised for both of those moves. Prime Minister Narendra Modi spoke for about 90 minutes then and managed to turn the debate to his and his government's advantage. So this time again, the motion is tabled a year before polls, almost a year. Then the BJP is again trying to replicate the 2018 impact in fact, since numbers are not in doubt and the sitting government faces no real danger, the bigger question is exactly who gains from this no-confidence debate that will be watched and heard by the entire country. And we'll take that question to our guests in just a bit. But first, let me take you through what are the issues that have been raised by opposition leaders in Lok Sabha today. So as I mentioned, Gaurav Gogoi of the Congress Party started this debate in Parliament today. What is it that he said? He has, of course, gone on to question the Prime Minister's silence and he says that this is because the Prime Minister knows that the double-engine government of the centre and the state failed in the state of Manipur. He has added that hatred has become a weapon for the BJP to win votes and attacked the Prime Minister for his jibes at the India Alliance and said that while you talk about Indian Mujahideen, we talk about Indian Institute of Technology. So that's the difference between the two sides. BJP's MP from Jharkhand, Nishikant Dubey, responded saying that many India MPs don't even know the full form of their own alliance name. He claimed that during Congress, uh, during BJP's parliamentary meet, the Prime Minister said that this is actually not a no-confidence motion against the sitting government, but a trust in opposition vote because they want to test their own alliance partners and are unsure of their loyalties. He even took a jibe at former Congress President Sonia Gandhi saying that she wants to set up her son, which is of course Rahul Gandhi, and take care of son-in-law, which is Robert Vatra. NCP Supriya Sule used the word hubris to describe the centre government. She alleged that nine governments have been toppled by the BJP in last nine years of Modi government at the centre. She also claimed that the Modi government is anti-farmer government. Union Minister Kiran Rijuju was one of the big faces of the central government who spoke on this issue and many more will do in times to come. He turned the pages of history and reminded that Northeast was neglected during UPA or Congress times. He alleged that Congress has always insulted leaders from northeastern part of the nation and that the situation in Manipur, which is the state that is of course a subject of much debate currently, has improved after Narendra Modi came to power in 2014. Now, like I said, the government is not really in danger. So why is the opposition putting so much effort and weight behind this no-confidence motion? Now, the opposition knows that they don't have the numbers to defeat the government in parliament. Of course, the numbers are not in question. But the opposition wants a longer debate or an opportunity to be able to speak at length on Manipur. They don't want the Manipur debate to happen under Rule 167 alone, which the Treasury benches are insisting. That allows a debate only for two and a half hours. The opposition's intent is also to force the Prime Minister to speak on the Manipur issue and because this is happening when the Manipur issue is centre stage, it is expected the Prime Minister will respond on that. And through this no-confidence motion, the opposition wants to mount pressure on BJP to sack Manipur Chief Minister N. Biren Singh. Just hours before the no-trust debate began, the Saffron Party 
convened a parliamentary meeting when Prime Minister Narendra Modi himself said, and this gives you an idea of the confidence that the Treasury benches have, that there was no reason for the BJP to worry about this no-trust motion. Hinting towards his speech, which will be the conclusion of the debate in Lok Sabha, he said that the BJP will be hitting a sixer at the last ball, or this is the opportunity to do so. He attacked the opposition and claimed that opposition alliance is plagued by mutual distrust. He claimed that India bloc is ego egotistical and NDA proved its might in Rajya Sabha last evening, remember, during the voting on the Delhi Services Bill, which was termed as a semi-final ahead of 2024, because that's really what the numbers position is. He asked BJP MPs also to initiate a campaign against corruption, against Parivar Vaad and appeasement politics. And these are the issues that the Prime Minister himself has been raising as and when he speaks at large to the public. So the big debate that's coming up, first up on Plain Speak. The numbers not in question, the government not in danger. So exactly who gains from this no-confidence debate? मुखिया होने के नाते प्रधानमंत्री सदन में आए अपनी बात रखे अपनी संवेदना प्रकट करे और उस पर सारे पार्टी समर्थन दे इट्स द एटीट्यूड ऑफ दिस गवर्नमेंट इज ह्यूब्रस देयर इज नो अदर वर्ड उनको दो काम करना है बेटे को सेट करना है और दामाद को भेंट करना है समय के यूपीए सरकार को हम हाथ जोड़ के हम उनको मान करते थे पुकारते थे कि कभी कभी आप नॉर्थ ईस्ट का तरफ भी ध्यान रखिए Let me go across to the guests joining us on the show today. Sujata Paul is from the Congress Party, Neeti Jain, the BJP spokesperson. I'm also joined by Ravula Sridhar Reddy from the BRS. That is, of course, equidistant currently from both the blocks of the NDA and India. And Tushar Gupta, senior editor, Suraja Magazine, is also joining us. Let me begin with Neeti Jain. Neeti, of course, your government is not in danger. But... Clearly, the opposition wants to hold the government accountable using parliamentary proceedings and rules and options in front of them by moving this no-confidence motion to put you on the mat, possibly, but at least make, you know, uh, make the government responsive and responsible for what is going on in the country. For example, the biggest issue the opposition wants to raise is they're just not getting adequate response on the issue on, of Manipur. The Prime Minister made a brief statement on it on one day before the session began and they've been asking for him to respond in Parliament. How do you respond to that charge today, that your government is not willing to respond on this issue? Uh, Yunus Shivani, uh, I think the government from day one has said they were willing to talk about Manipur. They have said it is, uh, it is a sensitive matter and the mm. government wants that discussion so that we can tell what the government has done and the steps that have been taken to normalize the situation in Manipur. Nobody in the government has said that we are not going to discuss it. It is just the arrogance of uh, the opposition that has refused to enter the parliament or let the parliament function for the past 10 days. And if you are saying that this is a way that they have uh, decided to be heard and to make the prime minister speak, I think they're forgetting that considering the BJP has a maximum number of seats in uh, Lok Sabha, we are the ones who will get a maximum number of time. And I think it uh, weighs well for us that we get to talk more about what the government has done and mm. uh, everything that we have been trying to talk about. So this is a, a loss situation in every way for the opposition that is trying to come together. And I think the only no confidence that uh, exists in this entire matter is between the opposition themselves. They okay. have so you are saying that not, in just, not just in terms of the numbers, but also in terms of perception, the opposition stands to lose. Because, Definitely. Uh, if Even they if, come they up with the, no if they raise the and issue they, they want to raise, still the 
public is not going to be enthused with what they have to say rather will you know uh, will be more enthused or believe the words of the treasury benches but let sujatha paul respond to that sujatha would it be unfair to say that uh, there is a little bit of a contradiction with moving this no confidence motion at this stage yes it is for perception sake it is posturing if I, one one can use that word but does it really help the opposition block the india block it helps india and i think my country because when the prime minister does not uh, speak about manipur uh, when manipur begins to burn when manipur continues to burn and only responds when there's a video which uh, you know which it was comes into the public domain then it says a lot about him and the only thing that he's doing even today is uh, everything that he can possibly do with the 2024 elections in mind hmm. in uh, the month of may he went to hmm. karnataka to uh, to be the chief uh, campaigner for bjp he didn't bother about uh, manipur his own mlas uh, have been uh, somebody has been paralyzed somebody's house has been burnt down but he hasn't been bothered he traveled all over the world but he was bothered about manipur and when this video came out how much time did he give out of those 36 seconds that everybody saying that he gave actually he spoke the word manipur and nothing more beyond that okay. the fact is that baba sahib bhimrao ambedkar had said that uh, numbers don't matter the parliament belongs to the opposition the opposition should be heard but there is no, no longer absolutely there are historical uh, obviously examples of how many no confidence motions have been brought against pretty stable governments and most of those no confidence motions get defeated yes niti you wanted to come in let's just focus on this manipur issue for example this is in itself a big statement the opposition is making that see to get yourself heard on the issue of manipur and to get the government to respond and the head of the government to respond this is the move we've had to take Why do you think that you will look better on the Manipur issue? But the government has not once refused to discuss Manipur in the parliament. Has anybody from the government or the state government refused to answer any of the questions? It is simply the arrogance of the opposition that has stuck on one issue and they're not even willing to start the matter amit no, shah ji you've been the whole pushing minister, that manipur debate the whole towards minister, the end of the let session me no niti let me let me just come in so jada also wants to come in i'm just putting it out there so that you can respond to this you've been accused of pushing the manipur issue which is the most burning raging issue of of the day or during this session to the back burners if i may use that term and also under rule 167 alone which is a limited debate you could have agreed for a more free wheeling debate on this uh so shivani i think when the debate starts it is up to the speaker to extend that debate if it if the matter requires time amit shah ji said we are willing to discuss it across the day if that is what is required but let us at least start the debate that is what the government has been saying for so long amit shah ji the home minister who was required to be there and he was there in uh, manipur to take stock of the matter and to see what uh, actions have been taken they are not willing to listen to the concerned minister it is that arrogance this stuck that prime minister bolenge to hum andar aayenge prime minister so bolenge to rahul gandhi is the opposition on the prime, the prime minister speaking in the house alone why are you not willing to look at the minister concerned which is the home minister here i will only quote what our uh, uh, mp mr gorav gogoi has said he put so few questions he asked why the prime minister has not been to manipur and the reason was given in the second question he he said and i quote him that uh, if the what the prime minister says is more important than all the ministers put together and that's a fact he's our prime minister he's the prime minister of the people of manipur and when he appeals for peace there will be peace over there there is no two ways about it but he hasn't appealed for peace this is the reason why why we want him to be speaking on manipur why we want him to appeal for peace why we want him to go there and the third question that he asked was why is uh, the chief minister n virin singh not being removed you know very well that uttarakhand got three chief ministers because for election sake uh, as far as manipur is uh, your tripura is concerned or karnataka chief ministers were changed in gujarat the entire cabinet along with the chief minister okay, was fair changed enough. why not here Nidhi, very quickly before I go to our other guests. So the prime minister is no way saying that he would not be a part of the debate. The debate needs to start. Let it. Let the discussions begin. And the prime minister can wade in into that debate. The, the prime minister days. has not refused to make that point. The point is the arrogance of the, the opposition has washed out the entire session for about ten days. 
and now they have come with a lose Five lose seconds. situation where they come up with a no trust motion and which definitely they are going to lose if they lose in perception they lose in numbers and uh, that that is the matter. entire point the entire northeast problem is something that we have inherited from the upa and the state government and the central government has done a lot to make things better there if you want the numbers i can give you 8000 youth surrendered and entered the mainstream oh, 74% please. less please. rebellion What all of those numbers about? i can come out and give to you but the point is this is what our government what has done we have an entire ministry look looking at me with our team to the north so we definitely right. have nothing to run away from in that debate so jata there are only 3 days that you are giving to manipur and that too towards the end of the parliament session you Are should be ashamed of us so discuss we are there for other chairman yati ki team ne rajya sabha mein kyon nahi discussion kiya you should be ashamed that manipur is uh, burning we are women sitting over here and we don't want ourselves to be discussed why are we not that discussing the problem we may not see the women you don't want to discuss you don't want to discuss the women in behind exactly. the women in behind that is your discussion with the women the women matter you are not the women i think it's never to be that the women of manipur or women of anywhere get that space but you yourself being a woman from the bjp do not want it that is the shame of it that is the sad we part. have been talking about the this we have so much done so why is he not there in parliament manipur if he is so much talked about the people, the people of manipur okay. and not the women in the temple of manipur and today you are standing here and you are trying to scream you know that madam okay one by one all right let me let me just come in here you know this is the problem again everybody would want better debate to be taking place on the issue of manipur and other debates any on any other issue and on the floor of the house as well of course one day of today's no trust motion debate has taken place it is set to continue for two more days but i come back to the bigger issue of exactly who this no confidence motion is helping mr reddy you want to weigh in on here uh, you're not part of either block you've been critical of both sides i want to understand from you is this no confidence motion debate helping any one or could this have been avoided did the no confidence motion was it was it really necessary to in, enforce debate to force a debate even on the issue of manipur definitely because see the government was not at all ready to make a statement on manipur the prime minister was not ready to make a, a statement on such an important thing where manipur was burning and even after 100 days after 143 dead more than 20 people missing and there is no solution seen in the near future the chief minister was helpless and you uh, know even after all that the prime minister doesn't go to manipur and he doesn't want to make a statement instead he make foreign tours at the other end if you look at the other issues other larger issues also in the country hmm. you know the ed cbi I, it teams you know hunting the in a way hunting the opposition leaders you know trying to suppress the opposition voices you know uh, fabricating false cases on them entire government machinery they are using for their own benefit so in, in a way in a larger perspective the entire government is actually collapsed there is no proper development proper welfare measures but the government is busy running from election to election I from one state to another state i understand the concern you are raising but in all it this in all this in all this it's unfair to suggest that you haven't had opportunities to raise these concerns opposition members including parties like yourself have had the opportunity on They top of that you are suggesting the government machinery has collapsed or the government has collapsed because they're not doing the things they should be doing they're doing other things all of that is fine but the numbers you know will not speak to this mr reddy shivani are you only looking at this are you looking at this entire issue only as a number game it's but not a number not? game at all we see at, at one end the bjp spokesperson is saying the you know opposition is arrogant they don't have numbers hmm. numbers are one side but people are one side you may have numbers today hmm. you might have numbers today in the parliament but outside the entire country more than 130 crore indians are you know looking at you as a team of you know failure and okay. you know no, we, fair we are enough. questioning as that as an opposition and it's your job how it is arrogant the current government how it can be arrogant my, my no you fair know. enough the opposition has to be heard they have to be given their space and they have to hold the government accountable my question only is is a no confidence motion required for that absolutely required that's what i'm saying the entire country have lost confidence 
on this council of ministers and the prime ministers but mr they reddy that's not an exaggeration a lot of the situation that's not the truth no question at all that's i am telling you that's a political statement as a political party as a political party representing the people we have this opinion hmm. hence we gave the no confidence motion a government which which could not control law and order situation hmm. in a small state like manipur even after 100 days and the home minister of this country camps there for 4 days he will not have any awareness of the entire issue what's happening there a, a twitter video had to come out on to, the issue you know, no, so the, that's what i'm saying so the, either either, the, either you accept the that it's the, because of the manipur issue and because you want to force the prime minister to come and make a only, statement in parliament that's why you needed yeah. the no confidence motion either you is accept it not the that. responsibility shivani yes. is it not the responsibility is prime minister is exempted why should he take it on a ego personal lines he is the head of the council of the ministers head of the government not only that this government every day is killing the you know federal democracy yesterday you have seen it's a blot on the you know entire thing that you know the delhi you're talking delhi, about the delhi, delhi services delhi bill. Again, that's yeah, a delhi political statement bill. sir no, fair no, and not square only, this is not political debate statement was, no but sir fair and square killing a debate the, was held on this parliament uh, is the will of the people the the bill passed in both houses let's also accept that there might be numbers there might be numbers again okay but then look well, at that the issue then will be settled opinion. in next, next elections that's just how our parliamentary democracy works both of our other panelists want to come in but let me give some time to tushar uh, gupta as well tushar exactly who will gain more from being heard from this debate from this word battle inside parliament that has now been triggered for 3 days because of this no confidence motion both sides feel that they are going to come out trumps your sense uh you know mr reddy here is dwelling in the castle of his imaginations and the opposition as a whole is dwelling only in rhetorics my worry is that shivani that the opposition just wants to use manipur for political brownie points they do not want a serious discussion around it they started by saying that the government does not want a discussion on manipur the government hmm. conceded to the request hmm. then they said that the prime minister has to speak hmm. yesterday on the floor of the house when the rajya sabha voting was about to begin amit shah said that i am very happy to have a discussion on the 11th of august if the opposition permits then the opposition had a problem so one would get the impression now almost after two weeks of this to and fro between the opposition and the government that the opposition is running away from a serious discussion in manipur no one is denying that the bjp has a very serious problem in manipur to solve mm -hmm. no one is absolutely denying that but at the same time the government should be allowed to answer on manipur some tough questions should be asked a debate must happen the opposition has not shown that intent and now talking about the gains and the losses we were told that rahul gandhi is going to make a strong comeback in the parliament and the lok sabha and he is going to open the no confidence motion today he was not speaking now day after tomorrow the prime minister is going to speak and rest assured we'll talk about everything because now this has become the issue of the government being a failure or not it has not become a manipur issue so okay. who stands to gain here the opposition on a platter has served the prime minister an opportunity to launch the campaign for 2020 pro from inside the Sujata parliament Paul. and the opposition has yes, no one I to blame but them yes sujata okay. paul have yeah. you given as the prime minister Sushar is quoted Ji, to have said you are saying, have you given Shivani, as the prime minister Shivani. has quoted to is quoted to have said that the last ball par ab sixer lagega yes mr reddy you can come in but let sujata paul respond first you know uh, who will gain more kaun sixer lagayega manipur lose karega we don't want manipur to lose and manipur is losing very badly that's important i want to remind you of what happened uh, in july 2012 uh, when uh, kokrajhar chirang dubri bongaiga uh, clashes broke out at these places two weeks after that dr manmohan singh then prime minister appeal for peace and next month he addressed the rajya sabha during discussions on the violent cabinet clashes here so the prime minister is responsible and he should be discussing uh, that in parliament now uh, uh, i i find this very strange do you want to rule in hell what kind of world are we living in we want to let manipur burn and only think about uh, elections but then why did the opposition the to amit shah request yesterday in uh, person that he can become a dictator but he will not be a statesman because like in parliament we are seeing uh, minakshi lekhi rhetoric uh, rhetoric thre rhetoric no, rhetoric people can you just be quiet keep quiet and this rhetoric keep in between keep quiet you i did not speak in between, between. yes you you're just engaging quiet. in rhetoric you you're up. just engaging in rhetoric don't speak in between. rhetoric ma'am no, 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 let's not get into this kind of personal attack 
तुषारा कम टू यू सुजाता 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 द फंडामेंटल पॉइंट बीइंग सुजाता कम डाउन द फंडामेंटल पॉइंट बीइंग दैट यू वांट अ डिबेट ऑन मणिपुर बट यू वांटेड इन द टर्म्स ओनली इन द वे दैट यू वांटेड इट इज पोस्चरिंग इट इज पोस्चरिंग एट द एंड ऑफ द डे not at all we wanted the prime minister to come forward and and say that we want a debate but when he didn't then we said that let's debate he said limited time the the rajya sabha said li- limited time we said no unlimited time okay. let the people of manipur feel that we are feeling for them we are talking about them mr reddy mr reddy and the neeti will respond to both uh, mr reddy and the neeti will respond to both shivani we, shivani when we speak on behalf of the manipur people hmm. when we question the government the bjp spokesman says it is arrogance of the opposition tushar gupta who supports bjp says it is rhetoric what do you expect from us you don't we don't question the government then concede the request for any, a debate on we don't utilize process. any opportunity the in the constitutional process yesterday. now now look at your mindset look at your mindset when we question Are the home minister is asking issue, for a debate you say listen listen tushar gupta you can't come in between Wait a minute. Mr. Wait a minute. Reddy, the I have patience to listen said, to me. Let's debate on August 11. I have patience to listen to me. Where are you from? I have patience. Tushar, Tushar, I didn't come in between. One by one. One by one. But Mr. Have, Reddy, the point you. continues to be the same. The Manipur debate need not have happened in this fashion. You are right in wanting to do the Manipur debate, the, but you need we, not we, have we, triggered a no confidence motion for that. The government, the government has not responded at all. What do you think the the opposition should be doing? and today they say when the no confidence motion are given on these issues they are simply saying they are showing their mindset and true colors we are we got a great opportunity to criticize the opposition and we will use this platform as a 2024 election campaigning is this, this is this your mindset is this your mindset women are you know raped gang raped paraded naked and you say you will use the you know parliamentary platform as a campaign shame on you guys Okay. Still, you say that Neeti, we are arrogant. Neeti, please respond to that. Yeah, we cannot question. Shivani, so yeah, Tushar, you, yeah, Tushar. Okay, one second. Neeti, Tushar wanted to respond. Let him respond because he commented on his uh, statement very quickly. Tushar, thirty seconds, please. You know, one, I, I cannot address the lack of comprehension skills on the part of Mr. Reddy. That's honestly beyond me. And I would also excuse the disgraceful manner in which Sujata Paul was conducting herself, quite like her part party. The problem here is Shivani that the Home Minister, even if the opposition wants to accuse that the government is running away from a debate, just last evening the Home Minister said, "I'm ready for a debate on Manipur on August 11th after the well, North 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 motion say. debate ends." Why is the opposition? You should be ashamed. You, that? you don't care about women. Okay, one second. Let's not make personal statements, Shivata Ji. Please, that does not help the discourse or the debate. Neeti Jain, I have a minute left. One second, ma'am. Ma'am, please, one second. Hold on, hold on. Neeti Jain, I have a minute left. Please respond. One, the government was unwilling to let Manipur be the central issue. and for even the prime minister to be addressing assuaging the fears that the people in manipur or the larger public may have on this issue secondly you were trying to push it to the back burner and thirdly it isn't just about numbers it is also about holding the government of the day accountable even if this motion is set to be defeated so shivani all i want to say is that it is the responsibility of the opposition to hold the government accountable but it is not up to them to hold the government at ransom which is what the opposition is trying to do right now they have terms and conditions about everything because the government knows it is a sensitive matter matter manipur is a very sensitive matter we have been dealing with it accordingly and the government wants to respond about it in the parliament and otherwise but the opposition needs to seed space and they need to give us time to at least talk about those matters all they're trying to do is wash out the session like they have done in the past and not let any of the discussions happen not just this and if you bring out a no confidence motion whatever perception you talk about i think it is about winning and losing and if you are, if you know you are bringing out this motion in a losing Shame. state i think it is it is you who are handling it uh, handling it be a game to talk to about the good works game. that we have done I- And that is what we are going to do. No, but so Jata uh, Paul, if we were, you can make the argument that you know this isn't about numbers alone, and I get it. Like I said, in the past, motions have been brought in even for governments that are not in danger. So this isn't about bringing the government down. It's about holding the government accountable, getting the prime minister to speak. I get it. Transfer. Okay, fair no, enough. Okay, fair enough. But okay. my point is ultimately, so Jata Paul, let's not act like this isn't about politics. This is about politics. So both not blocks. Right. 
the India block and the NDA block is going to use it to get their message across to the public at large. You want to call it campaigning for 2024 or use some other words, but that's what it is. But why is the government allowing anybody to do that? It was the government's responsibility to have the discussion. It was uh, uh, the responsibility of the government to respond. It is the responsibility of the government to ensure that the parliament government functions. Has been so should this discussion not have been done? The parliament uh, should it not have? Uh, the, should the session have been started with a discussion on Manipur? You answer that. Of course, it will be used by whoever wants Prime to. Prime Minister made the statement. For us, Manipur is not the going parliament. to be allowed to lose. Manipur. And he said we that this country needs to happen. But this government doesn't okay. care. Look at that. They are only speaking in between because they are rattled and uh, flustered okay. and frustrated today. Uh, yes, Tushar, I'll give you the last twenty seconds, please. You know, Shivani, let's for a moment forget who said what, who made what demand, who conceded hmm. to what. Hmm. Is it fair that a party with 50 seats, by virtue of their numbers, they don't even constitute to have a leader of the opposition? But is it Why fair that a party with 50 seats in Lok Sabha... Are you Mr. Trying Mr. To say you will blindly that support the government. You are not ready to call it for the discussion of Manipur. One by one, one please. Let this person have Ms. their Paul say. I request Tushar Gupta... All of you have gotten enough time. Can we, yes, Tushar Gupta, please, 10 seconds, please wrap up. Shivani, you know, it is the blind support to the government. Not dictating their demands. It shows where the opposition's priority is. They wanted to dictate their demands. Okay, I have to leave it at that. I have to leave it at that. Ladies and gentlemen, I do thank you for joining us for our top debate. I do have to slip into a short break. Of course, the no-confidence debate will continue for a couple of more days. And the Home Minister and the Prime Minister are set to speak. But... As we slip into a very short break, here's a reminder of what is coming up. Remember, the Jammu and Kashmir police has now reopened Justice Ganju case from 1989. The big debate that's coming up, will justice finally be served? Not just in this case, but there are plenty such cases from the time that triggered the Kashmiri Pandit genocide and exodus.
सर आपकी इजाजत हो तो मैं यहां से बोलना चाहता हूं सर अध्यक्ष महोदय मुझे लगता था कि अविश्वास प्रस्ताव पर राहुल जी बोलेंगे कांग्रेस के मित्र बोलेंगे और कोई बहुत बड़ा विषय होगा जिसके आधार पर कि रूल्स का फायदा उठाते हुए मान्य सदस्य ने पूरी बात कही है ऐसे नहीं चलेगा प्लीज बैठिए इसके बाद राहुल जी भी नहीं बोल पाएंगे और कोई अपोजिशन का आदमी नहीं बोल पाएगा मैंने धैर्य पूर्वक सुना है आप मुझे धैर्य पूर्वक सुनिए अध्यक्ष महोदय अध्यक्ष महोदय फिर ये नहीं चलेगा हाउस यदि वो हल्ला करेंगे ये हाउस नहीं चलेगा ये हाउस नहीं चलेगा ये हाउस नहीं चलेगा एक 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 प्लीज एक भी प्लीज 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 आपको मैंने अलाउ नहीं किया है प्लीज मान्य सदस्यगण मान्य सदस्यगण ये महत्वपूर्ण डिबेट है और महत्वपूर्ण डिबेट में आपके मान्य सदस्य ने पूरी बात कही है सबने पूरी ध्यान को सुनी है अब निशिकांत जी बोल रहे हैं आप इस तरीके से डिस्टरबेंस करना ठीक नहीं है सदन की तरफ बाली निशिकांत जी अध्यक्ष महोदय अध्यक्ष महोदय अभी मणिपुर की बड़ी चर्चा हुई सबसे पहले तो मैं इस अविश्वास प्रस्ताव के विरोध के लिए खड़ा हुआ मैं अपने पार्टी के नेतृत्व करता आदरणीय मोदी जी और पूरे पार्टी का शुक्रगुजार हूं कि इतने 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 महत्वपूर्ण बिल पर इतने महत्वपूर्ण बिल पर पार्टी ने मुझे बोलने के लिए खड़ा किया अभी मैंने गौरव गोगई को सुना सर Thanks a lot for staying with us. You're watching Plain Speak with me, Shivani Gupta. Now, in a big move towards recognizing the genocide of Kashmiri pundits and addressing a long-pending demand for justice for Kashmiri pundits, the Jammu and Kashmir Police has reopened Justice Ganju murder case nearly 34 years after the retired Sessions and High Court judge was shot dead by terrorists in broad daylight in Srinagar. So, three decades later, the State Investigation Agency of the uh, Union Territory has now initiated a fresh probe. It has also sought public assistance to unearth, quote, the larger criminal conspiracy in the case. First up, a brief reminder of what this case is all about. So, Justice Neelkant Ganju is the slain retired judge of Jammu and Kashmir Sessions Court and High Court. He was shot dead by terrorists in broad daylight on November 4, 1989, in Srinagar, when he was 67, just after the retirement from High Court. He was targeted because he sentenced JKLF founder Makbul Bhatt to death in the 1960s. JKLF founder Makbul Bhatt was sentenced to death for the murder of Inspector Amar Chand. Supreme Court later upheld Makbul Bhatt's death penalty in the year 1982, and he was finally hanged in Tihar Jail in Delhi in 1984. Now this move becomes important because for years there has been no relief 
or action from even courts of the country to investigate these cases despite in some high profile cases like this one admission on camera by the accused like Yasin Malik and Bitta Karate in July 2017 the supreme court rejected a petition seeking investigation of the killings of kashmiri pandits during this period the bench said that evidence is unlikely to be available because of the time the passage of time in september 2022 last year the supreme court also refused to entertain a plea seeking probe into murder of advocate tikalal taplu in 1989 Same year the Supreme Court refused to entertain a PIL seeking a probe into these killings others as well and rehabilitation of those who had to flee the Kashmir valley the bench left it open for petitioners to go to the union government instead for redressal and finally in November 2022 the Supreme Court dismissed a plea which challenged that earlier 2017 order on the genocide probe closing the door at least the legal door completely Now this is interesting because in the 1984 anti Sikh riot case in Delhi an SIT was formed by the Supreme Court despite much passage of time Now the reopening of the Justice Ganju case is a big step towards recognizing the genocide of the Kashmiri Pandits and addressing a long pending demand for justice which I just as I mentioned has been going unheard even in the courts of Indian um, legal system So this will of course be that step in that long pending demand there is also an improved scenario especially from the point of view of security and terrorism on ground which is also giving agencies the time and space to probe these old cases and we are told the state wants to unearth the larger criminal conspiracy behind these murders that triggered the genocide and the exodus so coming up is the debate on this case being reopened will justice finally be served as far as these families are concerned pain of reopening the old wounds the underlying hope remains that justice will prevail bharatiya janata party ki sarkar ne pehle se hi kaha tha ki jab ye jo trasdiyan hui hai aur unki jaanch karna zaruri hai Joining me on the show is Amit Raina who is spokesperson of the organization Roots in Kashmir has been fighting for these cases to be reopened or investigated properly for many years Utpal Kaul is international coordinator Global Kashmiri Pandit Diaspora Ashutosh Tiplu is son of Tikalal Tiplu who was also murdered by JKLF terrorists in Kashmir in 1989 Ashutosh ji why don't i start with you How do you look at this opening of investigation of Justice Ganju's murder, and does this give you confidence that something can happen in uh, Mr. Taplu's case as well? Thanks for calling me. Uh, the opening of Ganju's case. Uh, what can I say? We are still waiting uh, justice for last thirty-three years. Mm -hmm. Now, Mr. Ganju's case is open, and we don't know. what is going to happen uh, in this case as the as for my information government of india has appealed all the kashmiri pandits who have who were witness who has witnessed hmm. the killing of uh, mr ganju but i will tell you one thing no kashmiri pandit was standing there when mr ganju was killed hmm. so how can a kashmiri pandit can give his witness for his killing yeah those people who were standing there belongs to this some other community does government uh, uh, hope that they will all come in front and will tell that yes mr ganju was killed by uh, this uh, person hmm still surprise that why government wants this when everyone knows that mr ganju was killed by the uh, jklf Jammu Kashmir Liberation Front. Yes. And who is this Jammu Kashmir Liberation Front? It was Yasin Malik, 
Bita Karate and Nalka Javed. And why don't why why they are asking us to give us the proofs? But don't you That's think, Ashutoshi? I understand your point, but don't you think this is just the start of that process? That uh, when an investigation is opened, it would be natural for the investigation agencies to ask for this. Whether they get something out of this is another matter. I am sure and I hope they will not depend. The entire investigation will not depend on just somebody coming forward. There would be other evidences put in place. Yes, we hope so. We hope so. We are we, we are very eager to know what will happen to this case. Like other cases are already in the court, court in Jammu. Hmm. But nothing has been done so far. So now this Kashmiri community is uh, hoping that this government, this current government, if, we, if we, they are awakened after 33 years, and uh, let us see what will be the result for this. But I have very little hope. Hmm. I am not seeking it as a as as that. Okay, now everything will be open and everything I understand. will be. Justice given to the justice. I understand. It would be difficult to put together this investigation, at least criminal investigation, because of so much time that has gone by. Utpal Kaur, you want to weigh in on this? Is this at least fundamentally a good step, even if the investigation may be hard? Uh, or do you feel that it has already come too, this is too little too late? Uh, thank you very much, Shivani, for inviting me. Uh, I welcome this uh, step. Hmm. And let me tell you, Kashmiri Pandit uh, community was waiting for last 34 years that uh, this nation will rise and uh, then there will be some investigation of our genocide. Hmm. Nearly 2,000 Kashmiri Pandits were butchered, killed in Kashmir. I can never forget few dates like 14th of September, uh, when our beloved leader, Tekalal Teplu, was assassinated outside his home. I can never forget, I still remember the day, 4th of November, when uh, Justice, Tekal, uh, Justice Nilkant Gunju was assassinated in Hari Singh High Street, just 600 meters from court. Hmm. So, and also 27th of December, when prominent leader of Anantanag, Prem Nath Bhatt was assassinated. Hmm. They were the face of Kashmiri Pandits and then the exodus of Kashmiri Pandits started in December, January and uh, everybody knows 19th of January was the black night hmm. uh, which our community will never forget. But uh, question is that whether really this will work and as uh, Amit Ranaji is sitting here and uh, nearly three, four times we have gone to Supreme Court hmm. and we can request Supreme Court of India, we can request through you to Chief Justice of India that now we have a lot of evidences. Uh, we have uh, unreported uh, Kashmir files, 750 interviews of victims and uh, their families and uh, uh, 32 of... We totally remember everything. There are newspaper photographs of Nilkant Gunju, how he was for more than one and a half hour. We have doctors. When the dead body was brought to SMHS hospital, how the three bullets came out from his shirt. And there are so many. We Everybody knows what happened. There is a yeah. police... They can get the, these police officers uh, because uh, there is a hard evidence against these uh, okay. terrorists. So you believe that symbolically and fundamentally, substantially too, uh, this is something that can yield results. Amit, I want to come to you as well. Now, rightfully, Mr. Call mentioned that you've been knocking on the doors of none other than the Supreme Court wanting to get relief and rehabilitation or at least some sense of justice and closure as far as these cases are concerned because it still boggles the mind that some of these dreaded names were on camera to confess their killings and multiple killings in the case of Yasin Malik and Bitta Karate, but really nothing happened. Such was the ecosystem at that time. But how do you feel today when the government is reopening this case after many, many attempts in the Supreme Court that continued to deny any your petitions to be heard in this matter? Yeah. The irony of the matter is a judge who delivered justice to hundreds of families. Mm. Today, his own is waiting justice for court. That's the truth of uh, mm. the matter. While judiciary may have failed in its duty, I haven't understood what stopped executive from fulfilling its duty. 
it, what we were asking from Supreme Court mm -hmm. could have been easily fulfilled by the executive itself. Now, we welcome the opening of case of Justice Neil Gandhi, but it is too little, too late. Mm -hmm. For a reason that one, you still haven't, uh, you, if you want to deliver justice, then only ne why Neil Ganju? Thousands of Kashmiri Pandits have been killed in Kashmir. Uh, uh, all, all the families of all these victims uh, need justice. You also, the entire community needs justice. You need mm -hmm. to find out the reasons that led to the genocide and ethnic cleansing of Kashmiri. Uh, uh, you, uh, the Lassa Kaur died on duty. Neil Ganju died on duty. Sarla Bhatt died on duty. Four Air Force officers died on duty. You have not been able to even convict Yasin Malik on the cases of the case of four Air Force officers who have been killed, hmm. where witnesses are available, where it's been uh, high court is uh, 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 the case is going on in high court. Now, unless and until you do not fast track the investigation and fast track the cases and make it time bound, probably it will be. वो कहते हैं हिंदी में कि वो घाव को खुरदने वाला काम है. Unless and until you do not commit. That you will fast track the cases, you will uh, fast track the uh, court uh, prosecution. Hmm. Nothing is going to come out of it, and okay. and you need to form an SIT. You need to form an SIT to investigate all the cases where you think it is possible uh, to at least. Uh, I but can don't understand you believe? Uh, don't you feel uh, that this would be the initial step towards that too? That more such cases will be reopened or reinvestigated or investigated properly now. This is just the start. There are two things one needs to find out. One, that is justice to the families of who have been martyred in Kashmir. Mm -hmm. Second is justice to the entire community by finding out the reasons that led to their genocide, addressing those concerns, so that if you want Kashmiri Pandit community to go back and live in Kashmir, you have addressed those concerns. Mm -hmm. Now, for 34 years, you have not even bothered to change the nomenclature from migrant to displaced. You don't want us to call us ethnic uh, victims of ethnic cleansing, genocide. It may have international issues, but you could you could at least call, could have called us displaced. You have not even you have chosen not yeah. to even use that word. So uh, and now you pick up a case, an isolated case. Again, I say welcome step. Something is better than nothing. Hmm. But there are many, many more cases which are awaiting this. Many more cases uh, and of course, many more things that need to be done. As you very rightly said, there needs to be a larger act acceptance. An organization like yourselves have been pushing for the genocide to be uh, you know, acknowledged. Unless we do that, it is not going to be possible to look into the reasons or accept the realities of the Kashmiri Pandits at that time and today. Taploji, uh, I want to come back to I want to understand from you, you feel that Yes, it will be difficult to prove this case and at least, uh, you know, asking the public at large to come out as witnesses is going to be futile. But I want to still understand from you, what is it that you would want to see happen in future now that this beginning is being made? I know it's been a long time coming and I know that, you know, justice has been delayed, justice delayed is justice denied. We all accept that, we understand that. But what is it that you would want to see happen from here on? We have one case very clear that Yasin Malik has killed uh, four our, uh, squadron leaders. Hmm. So he has not been still given any sentence. So what what you expect Kashmiri Pandas, the cases which are very neat and clean. Our one more martyrs, uh, Premiji, his, his son is fighting case for his father for last many years in Jammu court. What has happened to them? Hmm. Nothing has been happened to them. I am telling the day government of India will hang Yasin Malik because his case is now uh, uh, listened by the judges and everything. Now they are why they are delaying the uh, the judgment. So this is the problem with us community because we th we we were thinking that BJP, which is pro Indian, pro Hindus, and uh, more than seven lakh, eight lakh Kashmiri pundits were thrown out from the valley hmm. for last thirty four years. Nothing positive has come to the Kashmiri Pandit. No one is ready to listen to us. We, we, even Amit Rana, me also went to the Supreme Court yes. where Gaurav Bhatia fought for us. And uh, they are try telling us simply, look, this is now old, uh, more than 27 years. It is very hard. The Supreme Court is telling to us. It is very difficult to find the uh, proofs. Now, how now, how can we justify ourselves? How can we bring our proofs to the uh, Ganju's case. 
Now I agree with Utpal Kaul ji. Yes, there are records with the Jammu and Kashmir. The doctor who to, who to, who inspected the bodies who were killed. Hmm. So, but what has happened? All the proofs, government of government of Jammu and Kashmir, they are having everything. Every police man, police uh, department, they have the, all these such proofs. They are who killed him. I am very sorry to say, it is very early to say that now government of India is. Uh, very serious looking into okay. this. The day Yasin Malik is given a death sentence, we will believe that no, no okay. government is well, serious about Well, you are absolutely right. I understand, you know, um, the, the point of view that you are putting across because it is difficult, I am sure, for anyone in your positions and all three gentlemen that I am speaking to, fe to feel any sense of, you know, uh, closure or jubilation because of just how much time has gone through and you know the fact that even this we don't know where it exactly leads mr call sure, sure. yes yes Sorry, Raina? Can I, we are uh, the problem is if you look at the way supreme court dismissed the petition of kashmiri it, it was all very strange they said 27 years have passed by mm -hmm. it will supreme court to decide whether witnesses and proofs would be available it was for the prosecution as well as the investigating officer to come to the honorable court and say, sir, this is not possible. It, yes. They pre-assumed. Why, why, why was it pre-assumed? God knows. Because immediately after that, they go and give three judgments. One is the 84 Sikh right, which was seven years earlier than Kashmiri Pandits. They go and give a judgment on whether the second bullet was far, uh, fired on Mahatma Gandhi on, on 30 January 1948. They go and pass an order to investigate uh, on Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose's dis uh, disappearance at Farmosa, today's Taiwan. So mm. you could find, uh, you could hope to find witnesses, proofs on second bullet of Mahatma Gandhi, which is a 75-year-old case. You could uh, expect the same on Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, which was 80-year-old case in some other country. Mm. And you were, you believed uh, in a case where witnesses are alive, where investigation officers are alive, where doctors are alive, where there is a documented evidence. And Yasin Malik has gone on record on BBC saying to that confess. he killed, take, uh, yes, that he was person responsible behind the death of Scotland, uh, the four Air Force officers no, exactly. and Neil Kandigan. And I, you, you still know, have not is, been able to take it I forward. absolutely so get there, your there point. Is and there is a question that goes to the courts of the country as uh, you know, as well as far as this matter is concerned. Why even go back to the cases you're talking about? In 1984, anti-Sikh riot case that I mentioned at the start of this debate, they did form an SIT yeah. despite you know, multiple decades having passed. That's because the deliverance of justice or the, you know, to search for justice in itself is important, regardless of what comes Shwani, out. Shwani, Shwani, Mr. Call, I'll give you the Shwani, final Shwani. minute. Yes, Mr. Mr. Call. Yes. Uh, let me say that it, it is not uh, of uh, two, three people, uh, Gunju or Tikal Tiplu. We have more than 2,000 Kashmiri Pandits mm -hmm. killed. 20,000 houses were burned. 450 temples were destroyed. We have lost monetarily 45 billion US dollars. Hmm. Our land is nowhere. Our business was finished. There should have been so moto case by Supreme Court Chief Justice to see the justice for Kashmiri Pandas. And we have not seen it for last 34 years happening. Yes. And whole nation should arise and see how these Kashmiri Pandas who were hounded and who became uh, victims of, uh, they are victims of generational genocide, but last 34 Absolutely. years of genocide, they have seen, we need justice, justice and justice. Oh, absolutely. There are, of course, questions to, the, to those who were in governance at that time and in the subsequent 30 years, to the courts at that time and in the subsequent 30 years and the larger public as well. Why is it that this case was not looked at with the same lens, legally and otherwise, as were other cases? But let's just hope, and I thank you gentlemen for joining me, let's just hope that this is the beginning of that justice to be finally served in whatever measure it can and for the larger acceptance of what happened in Jammu and Kashmir at that time. On that note, time for me to take your leave. My colleague Anand is now joining you on the right stand. Anand, over to you. Well, thanks for that. As you talk about the issue of Justice Ganju, we'll come to that, uh, the genocide that's never spoken about. But ladies and gentlemen, there is yet another war that's brewing in Parliament and this is the fight over the no-trust vote.
the Congress trying to mount the attack, taking perhaps the central and trying to act as the fulcrum of this uh, newly developed alliance, which a member of parliament from the BJP alleged that majority of the members of parliament of the opposition do not even know the full form of what this abbreviation actually stands for. So that's the level to which the Aji Baji has gone in parliament. But clearly, it was God of Gogoi who moved the trust vote, a voice from the Northeast, son of a former chief minister of Assam. And it was yet another person, yet another MP of the BJP, who said that his own father had lost a leg while serving in areas like Manipur. So it was, you going to tell me about the facts of this country or are you going to tell me about the facts of this country? So the debate was hot, it was fiercely contested and it's going to go on. At least parliament is functioning. There is debate, not din and disruption, ladies and gentlemen. This is what happened through the day. मुखिया होने के नाते प्रधानमंत्री सदन में आए अपनी बात रखे अपनी संवेदना प्रकट करे और उस पर सारे पार्टी समर्थन दे इट्स द एटीट्यूड ऑफ दिस गवर्नमेंट इज ह्यूब्रस देयर इज नो अदर उनको दो काम करना है बेटे को सेट करना है 